Hey dude, sup? Don't you hey dude me. Look at this place. It's a goddamn mess. There's requests everywhere. I asked you to clean it up ages ago. What have you been doing? Uh, I've been busy. <laughs> busy? You've probably just been sitting on your ass watching Joey Salad's videos. Okay, one, these are all your requests. And two, I don't watch Joey Salad's videos. Really? <laughs> What's up guys, Joey Salads here, and I've got this candy, and I put poison inside of it, so we're gonna give it to some kids. Oh, come on! You've got, like, super speed. You can do it in half a second. Alright, fine. But you owe me one. Hmm. Deal. Then it's time to take out the trash. There. All done. Wait, you missed one. Oh, no I didn't. That one? gets to stay. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learn you good. And here it is, the tutorial I promised was coming soon. Uh, let's see. Two months ago? My god. You said it, Lawrence, but it's not entirely my fault. You do have this episode and this poll on Twitter to thank for that. So guys, before we get into the tutorial, I just want to talk about the best ways to use our Flash Lightning Effects Pack Strike, as I've seen a lot of people trying to use the Strike Lightning layers for shots that it just isn't meant for. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's use a couple of examples from the Flash TV show to do just that. Okay guys, let's take a look at a few examples from the show all at once. We have an entrance by Zoom, an entrance from the Flash, an exit from the Flash, and the Flash running past the camera. So what do they all have in common? Well, they all have very little camera movement or none at all, most likely added in post-production. The super speed character is represented by a few frames of blur before becoming 100% solid, with the exception of the shot of Barry running past the camera. And most important of all, the camera is set up to show the exit or the entry of the speedster. The camera doesn't follow the character at all, and that's the key to using these strike assets, guys. Focus on the entry or the exit or the character running past the camera, just like with the teaser at the start of the episode, and the effect will look great. So guys, I hope that clears up how to use these lightning layers effectively. Now, if you are new to the channel, you'll have to head down to the episodes on screen right now and download both Strike, and just in case you want them as well, the Strike Villain Pack is here as well. My God. I'll also encourage you to head over to our friends at actionvfx.com and hit up their free section for some sweet lens dirt and dust waves. And while you're there, why not check out the other free fire assets they have? Now, you got all that? Good. Then let's get to work. Okay guys, let's get this show on the road. So as you can see, I've got a comp set up and ready to go. If we check out a preview, you can see the camera pushes in and then I move into frame. A little slower than super speed, I might add. So you'll also notice that I have a background plate below our actor that starts when the actor enters the frame, which I'll explain a little bit more later on. Now, there are a couple of ways to portray super speed effects wise. And in the past, I would have just sped up the footage, added CC force motion blur, but that doesn't always look great. So today, we'll be doing something a little bit different. We'll be using editing, and guess what? It's actually easier. So here's the idea. Let's head to the point on the timeline before we enter the frame. And just quickly before I import the lightning, I'm just gonna trim the first few frames from my actor layer, just so that it looks like I'm coming from the other side of the screen rather than from the doorway. As the lightning I'm gonna choose represents an entry into the frame. So we've got to do it right. There we go. We'll then head over to the project window and import our strike sequence. For this one, I'm going to import entry 01. Now guys, if you want to see a preview of all the strike animations before you import, you can always head to the preview folder, right click and open them up in your browser window like so. Easy, right? So let's import entry 01 sequence. Now when you do, make sure you've set it to Photoshop sequence and also, once you have imported it, make sure it's set to 24 frames per second by clicking on it and checking here. If it isn't, right click on the sequence, select interpret footage and set it to 24 frames. All right, so let's open the sequence and trim it to start on the first frame of the lightning. We'll then drop it onto the timeline at the point we've marked out, AKA before the actor enters the frame. And then we'll change the transfer mode to screen. 
Whoops, almost forgot. Our character's coming in from the other side of the frame. So what we'll have to do is head up to layer, transform and flip horizontal. All done. We'll then scale down the lightning to suit the shot. Now it's important to note, you don't want to scale the lightning down smaller than the comp size. Otherwise you'll end up with this weird edge and it'll look kind of crappy. So from there, we'll hit P and hit the stopwatch on position. Now from there, we'll skip ahead one frame. Now, you see where the lightning is? Well, we're gonna grab our footage and then we'll move it along the timeline until our actor actually matches up with the position of the lightning. We'll then trim the excess like so. If you need to adjust the lightning at this point, by all means do. We'll then skip ahead one more frame, hit Control shift d to split that clip and then follow the exact same steps. Move it along the timeline to match our lightning position, trim the excess and then we'll adjust the lightning position if need be. We'll then repeat this step one last time, putting our actor into his final mark in the shot. So now we've got our actor synced up with our lightning and let's check out a preview. It looks good, but I might just adjust that one frame of lightning right here. And there we go. Let's check out a preview. Not bad, the speed is in place and you saw how easy that was, but it's time to tweak it a little. First off, I'm gonna head to the first frame of our split clips. I'll then grab the pen tool up here and draw a mask around our actor. We'll then head down and feather it out say 50 pixels. We'll then follow that up by heading to effect, blur and sharpen and adding a directional blur. We'll move the blur in the direction our actor's actually going. There we go. And then we'll crank it up to say 200. Our last step, we'll hit T, and we'll turn the opacity down on this layer to 75%. As you can see, we now have a nice bit of blur and our actor almost appears transparent, selling the fact that they are moving very fast. And you can now see that background plate below our actor now comes into play because it fills in the background that we've masked down. Pretty clever. We'll then move forward and repeat these steps on our next clip. Head up, grab the pen tool, draw the mask, feather it out, add the directional blur, and lower it slightly this time to 150. We'll then hit T and bump the opacity down to only 85% this time. Skip forward to our final frame and repeat all these steps again. This time, our blur will be set to 100 and the opacity to 95. I'm also going to duplicate our lightning layer to punch it up a little bit more. Hmm, nice. Now, let's check out a preview. Pretty good, but it's time to add some cherries on top to better sell this lightning. Firstly, some lens dirt. Now, if you head over to our friends at actionvfx.com, they have a pack of free lens dirt to download. Check the description below for a link to that one. As you can see in the project window, I've already imported one that I like. So I'll drop that into the comp, hit S, scale it down, and change the transfer mode to screen. I'll then scrub along the timeline and trim that layer to begin when our lightning first appears. From there, I'm gonna grab the pen tool and mask around where I want the lens dirt to appear. And there we go. I'll then hit F and feather it out around 75 pixels or so. That looks pretty good. Now I hear you saying, great, the color's all wrong. Well, it's easily fixed. We'll just head up to effect, color correction, and add photo filter. Now the default color is a warm color, so all we'll do is just bump that density up. Much better. Now since our lightning darts across the screen, so should our lens dirt. So let's collapse our mask menu and hit the stopwatch on mask path. And what I'm gonna do is go forward frame by frame and adjust the mask to highlight different parts of the lens dirt image to coincide with the lightning on screen like so. And of course, once the lightning is off screen, we simply split the clip and delete the excess of that lens dirt. Now gang, the next step is purely optional, and that is adding some light fall off from the lightning to other parts in the scene. So to do that is pretty simple. Let's head up, add a new adjustment layer. Next, I'm gonna grab the pen tool and draw a few masks in the areas I wanna add the light fall off to. Say the treadmill here, and maybe the legs of the Stairmaster. There we go. From there, we're gonna head up and add an exposure and then stay up there and add a photo filter as well. Both of them are sitting in color correction. Now I'm gonna slightly elevate the exposure and then adjust the photo filter to better suit the shot. You'll have to play around with these settings to suit your shot, of course. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna hit F and adjust the feathering on each of our masks to better blend them. Once you've done that, 
We'll simply trim the set adjustment layer to begin and end when our lightning is on screen. Now, onto that last cherry, adding a little camera shake. Now guys, I'm gonna be using Red Giant Universe's camera shake plugin, but that's just because I have it and it's easy. But I've left a link down in the description to a free camera shake plugin from Video Copilot, along with a tutorial on how to use it. So we'll add one more adjustment layer, add said camera shake plugin, set the shake amount to zero, scrub along the timeline just before our actor is on screen, say two frames before is good, we'll then hit the stopwatch on a mount, skip ahead until our actor appears, and set it anywhere to say two to four, we'll then skip ahead two to three more frames and crank it back down to zero. This will give you a subtle bit of camera shake. Lastly, we'll turn on motion blur for the comp and for every layer that's not the lightning. As we want the lightning to remain clear on the shot, but if you feel like it looks better with the blur, I ain't gonna stop you. Now, preview time. Very nice. And that is how you use Strike to the best of its ability. As you can see, I've conformed my footage to better suit the lightning, not the other way around. Because the lightning itself can only do so much, it's already been animated. But if you shoot the footage and edit it to match the lightning, you can see how well it works. I'm just going to add one more thing to this shot that I haven't talked about, and that's actually masking this chair out right here so the lightning actually appears behind it, which is super easy. All I'm going to do is just duplicate our background layer, drag it up on top of our footage, and mask around the chair. Do a quick feather, and all done. In my final shot, I actually added some of the light fall off to this chair, but just for this tutorial, I'm just going to skip it. Now before I close this one out, I just want to talk about some other shots really quick, and some things that you can do to enhance the shots further. One is this shot with Doug. I actually stood off camera and blew a deep breath into his face to simulate the wind passing by. And since it's a close up, I also added the light fall off technique to the whole shot. And in this shot here where I passed by in the microwave, I scaled the lightning footage down, positioned it on the door of the microwave, and masked it to act like a reflection. I even moved it one frame back from the other lightning layers to add some realism to said reflection. You can also add other elements like a dust wave element, like this. Just be aware that you may have to speed these up to suit your shot. I know I did. But thankfully, Action VFX also has a free dust wave pack as well. And just like before guys, the link is in the description. Now you can always add other stuff like flying papers, that's always a favour on the flash. And all that takes is, say, a friend off camera with some paper, or just stack some up in the shot and hit your actor with a burst of air from a leaf blower, like I did in the time travel tutorial. Which you can check out mm, here. Now some of you might be asking, why are you only showing us just that one shot? Now, the reason for that is pretty simple. I might have used seven different elements from Strike in order to make the teaser, but I used the same technique on every single one of them. I even managed to cheat on the microwave shot and I took a masked out layer of myself from the shot before and I just scaled it up and placed it in the scene for one frame. So guys, if you do have any questions about Strike, leave them down in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter. But that for now is another tutorial done. Out of all those steps and you get something like this, then it's time to take out the trash. All done. So guys, that's using Strike the right way. You just gotta remember those key fundamentals. Keep the shot on a tripod, don't frame the shot in a weird perspective, choose the right lightning layer, and most importantly, don't scale that lightning down too much. Now before I close this out, I did get the question on Twitter as to whether any more Strike packs will be released. And the answer is yes. When they will be released? Well, that's not really something I can answer at the moment. Season 4 of Film Learning only has a couple of episodes left, and I'd like to dedicate those to some long overdue requests, and I'm sure I'm going to release some cooler stock packs once Season 5 hits the interwebs. I've got some big plans. But that's all I've got for you, gang. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, flash punch that subscribe button. Follow me on the social medias to stay up to date on all things Grant, Film Learning, and everything in between. And until next week, when I return as a newly turned 36-year-old man-child, Keep learning.